Hello and welcome to another Huns History Nest podcast, where history is enjoyed and salvaged forever. Hello, this podcast is a continuation of the Articles of Confederation podcast. This is going to focus on the Northwest Territory and Shays Rebellion which are all part of what will lead up to eventually the Philadelphia Convention or the Constitutional Convention. Under the Articles of Confederation, one of the very limiting items here that it had was that this government did not have the power to tax. And this was due to the fact that the colonists were still terrified of creating a powerful government that could be overbearing like Parliament had been. And so they did not allow this government to tax. However, they did have a solution that they could perhaps raise revenue. And this was a law that they passed. It's actually the first law passed by this first government. It's called the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. This ultimately creates what is known as the Northwest Territory. The Northwest Territory will organize an entire area of land seen here, all this dark land, and it's going to organize it into six mile by six mile sections. Each of these six mile by six mile sections would then be divided up into 36 other plots of land. These plots of land then would be sectioned off as seen here with plot 30. And what happens here is, is that they can sell parts of land. This will then bring in revenue, and this is how they would then offset any expenses that they might have as a government, because they cannot tax. Please note, when you look at this, in every single plot of land, six miles by six miles, they're going to reserve an area for public schools. This is to allow public schools to be created throughout this new territory, and so it's really got some forethought to educating the people of the country. And the idea here that they had was that a voting populace of people needed to be an educated populace of people. So this is a milestone in American uh, public education and forethought. Perhaps the one incident, however, that got people in the United States to realize that having a weak government that can't tax, that is incapable really of uniting the states, more focused on creating 13 separate nations, would be a problem. And the issue that really brings it to uh, everyone's forethought is this incident known as Shays' Rebellion. And this is named after Daniel Shays up here in the upper left-hand corner. Daniel Shays is a veteran of the American Revolutionary War, actually fought at Bunker Hill. He's from Massachusetts. And this guy is going to really be the leader of all other veterans and others in our country who are having problems resulting from the United States of America's inability to actually allow for people to pay their bills. And this here, as being blown up, this is the Continental. And there was a move under the Articles of Confederation to make this the national currency. The problem with this was, is that all the states with their own currency. We ultimately had 14 currencies in America. And when the United States of America tried to take the 13 state currencies off the uh, market, if you will, and put this continental into effect, we had issues that basically arise from the fact that some currency was worth more, some less, and it led to people having debts. Now, some of these situations are going to be outlined right here in the middle. And here is what Daniel Shays and these men really were up against. They were up against the fact that the states were paying high taxes so that they could funnel money back to the national government and pay for things within the states. And the governor's salary was outrageous in terms of what they were used to. And when they couldn't pay their bills, they were then put in front of a judge, and the court costs for these debtors was immense. And so they're put in prison. And all of this is stemming from this uh, paper money issue. The result of all of this leads 
Daniel Shays and many farmers, veterans of the war, to protest. They tried petitioning. They tried um, you know, advocating for change by way of protesting. None of it seemed to work. So ultimately what they did learn from the revolutionary era is that the right to bear arms is to be used as their last resort. And that's exactly what they will do. Over the course of a year, these men will actually hold hostage one of the local courts in Springfield, Massachusetts, so that their friends can't be imprisoned. Ultimately, it will lead to George Washington petitioning the government of Massachusetts to uh, treat these men um, with care. And ultimately, it leads to an oath of loyalty to allow people to come back without being imprisoned or tried for treason. The situation ends, but the most important thing that it does do is it leads us to the idea that something needs to be done. The first result is the Annapolis Convention. This is going to be an effort by people to do something about Shays' Rebellion and what's going on. However, we will not have enough people attend. It will be poorly attended, only five states, and the result is, is that they will decide to meet again in Philadelphia. And this leads to the Philadelphia Convention. 